All right. Good morning. It's the weekend and uh, we have made it. So we celebrate whether coffee or, uh, you know, donuts or whatever. I'm not eating donuts. I didn't eat any yesterday just because I'm trying to be good. But uh, but anyway, life's good, isn't it? And uh, I don't know what your weekend looks like. Ours is absolutely crazy. Um, I, I think I've shared with you guys. I had an opportunity in a pretty large group I'm in uh, to enter a contest, kind of like a TED Talk. We call it Spark Speech. Um, and so I put my little 90-second thing in and got into the top 10, and then they gave us a three-minute deal, and I, uh, I, I ended up being the guy that they selected to, to win the thing, which meant that I get to speak at this conference, which will probably be one of the largest – meetings I've ever been able to speak in front of and uh, pretty excited about it. Um, but everything is just like working against it from a human perspective, but it's just a sovereign God doing his thing. But I couldn't get away today, couldn't get off, uh, just issues going on everywhere. So we're flying out today. We fly standby. So maybe we make our flight. Maybe we don't. Maybe they're full. And if they are, then we're just going to be driving for nine hours to get to a conference um, and it's already started. And then Sunday, um, I speak, uh, and I have to be back at work Monday because it, like I say, just lots of issues going on. And so, um, I'm hoping to catch flight late Sunday night. If I don't, we'll be pulling an all nighter. So who knows what's going to happen, right? Um, I love life though. And, uh, the good news is no matter what's going to happen, I'm going to be with my wife and Lord willing, I get a chance to to speak in front of that crowd, and uh, I'm just stoked about it. I, I'm loving everything about life, and uh, this the yesterday and today some of the best uh, information from the scriptures that that you could get. And uh, I I want to kind of real quickly review. We're in First Peter. For those of you that are uh, that are just joining in with us, we're in First Peter chapter three, and the whole book of First Peter is about how to live uh, up in kind of a downside world, right? Um, there's a lot of persecution going on when, when Peter, who he's speaking to, a lot of hostility against Christians. So they are just getting it. I mean, it's just coming at them. And uh, Peter reminds us, and I'm going to say it every week because it's it, I want it in my wheelhouse, and you should want it in yours. When life hits us really hard and, and, and we feel uh, like, Aliens, that's what we are. He says, you see the end game in mind. There's a heavenly city that we get to go to. And uh, he says, listen, you're, you, but you're a chosen race. You're a royal priesthood. Uh, he gives us all of these blessings. And then he says, now, how do you survive all of that? How do you thrive in the midst of a world that is imploding and, and is angry at you as a Christ follower? Uh, he says, well, in the governmental system, you honor him. You honor the emperor. For him, it was Nero. And he's like, you honor him. Uh, you, you're obedient. You're you're the best model citizen that there is. You're not a protester. You're not a, re, a, a part of a rebellion. You're just a model citizen. And the only time that you refuse to do that is when they tell you to do something that goes against the word of God. And even that, you don't resist arrest. You just say, I'm not doing it. And uh, man, it's pretty powerful, right? And then he says, now in the marketplace, you're the model employee. You, you just do your best. You do a good job. When you do that, he says, you silence your critics. Then he says, now if we bring it into the home and you've got an unbelieving wife, or I mean, for a wife, you've got an unbelieving husband, well, you, this is, this is drill down and be this as a wife. And then he, then he turns to the man and says, well, hey, when you have an unbelieving wife, well, then, Listen, this is what happens. Really powerful stuff of just being sensitive to the needs of others. And then we looked at, uh, and verse 10 is really kind of the hinge that takes 8 and 12 and ties everything together. So verse 10 says this, For whoever would love life and see good days must. And so before and after that, but that 4 attaches 8 and 9 to it. Uh, and then he's getting ready to give us the other flip side of it uh, on the on the back end of the last two verses. But the whole deal is, do, who, who doesn't want to love life and see good days, right? I mean, that's the whole goal of, of life for 
us just as humans is to love it, to love life and to see good days. That's why we dream of vacations. That's why we, we progress and, and try to become better at things. And, and, and some, some pursue things that are unnecessary thinking that will give to it. But he's saying, you want to love life and see good days. He's going to give us God's way, God's method of loving life and seeing good days. And so yesterday, we saw that there were five attitudes uh, in verse 8 <clears throat> that you and I should should grab a hold of. And so I'm going to review them really quickly. I'm going to read it, and then we're going to jump. We're just going to keep rocking through this. But he says, finally, all of you, now this is mean finally means in light of the fact that keep the end game in mind, Here's how you handle hostility in, in the governmental system and underneath the, a nation of rules. Here's how you, you survive uh, hostility in the workplace. Here's how you survive hostility in the marriage. And then he says, finally. Now, to kind of, so now he went, he drilled down deep into three areas, and now he's coming up and giving us the overview. And he says, finally, all of you be like minded. Now, that just means to have the same mind, right? Uh, homo frontes, that's, that's the Greek word there. It just means to, to, to live in harmony, to, uh, to not be contentious, to not go looking for a fight. We don't have to agree about everything, but we can all have the same mindset that said we want to get along, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It's a human thing. And he says, you, you need to be like-minded. Now, he's not talking about with brother and sister. He's saying, I mean, that's a piece of it. He's just saying to the world, be sympathetic, uh, suffer with. That's to suffer with. Um, and so he's saying, hey, listen, don't be cold hearted when people are hurting. Slow down. This attitude is the windshield through which we see life. If my attitude is this, my reaction is completely different. And so this is what he wants us to understand. Finally, be like minded, uh, be sympathetic. Love one another. That's a brotherly love. That, that's not the call to an agape God kind of love, which is what we are called to. He's lowered it down to say, just. Be a good human. That's what he's talking about. Brotherly love, as opposed to uncaring and oblivious about the needs of others. He's saying love one another. And then he's saying be compassionate. That's that's kind hearted, where, where there's just this we, we feel, right? Uh we there's a kind heartedness to us. We we understand the fragility of life and and why we uh we can't just be hard with people. There's just this, let's just be compassionate. Understand that. People are going through hard times. And then, and then he says, uh, and be humble. And we've, we've talked about that word in almost every area of the scriptures. Everywhere we go, we see that. That is that I regard you as more important than me. I'm not self-absorbed. So listen, if you live life like that, you're going to love life and you're going to see good days. I'm reminded as I'm talking, one in my notes, but I'm reminded of a, a story that uh, Andy Andrews tells uh, in The Noticer. If you don't know Andy Andrews, he lives in uh, Orange Beach, uh, author, uh, incredible gifted leader. Uh, and um, anyway, he he tells a story of when he was, uh, his parents died when he was fairly young. So he was living literally under the bridge in Orange Beach, um, doing a little work by day, sleeping there by night. And an older man, uh, Jonas came, Jones came and began to talk to him. Started bringing him books to read and things like that. Brought him one day, uh, some, a can of, uh, sardine, sardines and a can of Vienna sausage or, um, uh, and so <clears throat> he said, hey, let's, let's have dinner together. And so they do under the bridge, they're eating sardines out of a can and those little Vienna sausages out of a can as well. And uh, so he looks at Andy, Jones does, and says, hey, so so what are we doing? He's, We're eating sardines and weenies. Yeah, but, but I mean, tell me about it. What, is, what is it? Well, we're under a bridge, and we're eating sardines and weenies. And Jones said, see, that's the difference between you and me. You just are eating canned meat and, and looking at just a bridge. I, on the other hand, I'm having surf and turf with a view. And man, I mean that it doesn't it that's exactly the difference, right? Depending on how you see life. So Andy's going to have a terrible day cuz all he's eating is sardines and, and and a weenie and he's under a bridge. Jones is going to have a great day cuz he's eating surf and turf with a view. It's all in perspective. It's all about attitude. This is why it's so important. And this is why the scriptures are always talking about attitude. When um 
uh, Paul wrote to the Ephesians and he had just given them this great understanding of who they were in Christ. He says, then I urge you to walk worthy of the gospel of Christ. And then you, and, and he begins to give them a list of, of attitudes. Um, and, and they're powerful that you would be, um, uh, gentle, uh, that you would be patient, that you would be forbearing, that you would regard others as more important, that you would, um, uh, you know, these powerful attitudes that he lays out. Jan uh, Peter's doing the same thing. So he says, live in harmony, be of the same mind, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate, be humble. Those are attitudes. That is that is an attitude in which then my behavior flows. Well, everything changes if I'm sympathetic to people. I'm not harsh, right? I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not contentious. I'm not cold. I'm not uncaring. I'm not hard. I'm not self-absorbed. If you're all those things, you will never love life and see good days. Now, I talked too long about that. We really are going to get to the next part, uh, but it goes rather quickly. Uh, then, so today we're looking at this. He said, he goes on, he says, do not repay evil for evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So here's the thing. You want to love life and see good days? It's about blessing, right? You will never find blessing if you don't watch your mouth. Listen to what he says. You will never have a blessing if you don't watch your mouth. Man, we tend, and, and that's just, that's words too. Like, on you know, when you get on social media and you're one of those, you know, uh, they just get in there and just you're just letting everybody know everything you feel. That's, that's watching your mouth too. So as you, th those words that you type, is your mouth. You just, it's just, you're just using words to do it. And he's saying, you want to live good days, love life and see good days. You watch your mouth. Listen to what he says. Don't repay evil for evil. Okay. So somebody, uh, somebody's evil to you. Well, well you, you're not going to pay him back. You're, you're not going to, um, you're not going to find some way to, to hurt them or, or talk about them or get other people in on that. No, you'll never, if, if you spend your time doing that, Shakespeare said, it's like drinking poison. Bitterness is like drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. So you and I can't be a part of that. I'm not, you, you come at me with evil. I have a choice. I always have a choice. And if I want to, if, if my choice is to love life and see good days, I'm going to give you a pass. I'm going to go on down the road. I'm not going to waste my time trying to match your evil with evil. Not going to do it. See, this is this is self-control. You want to love life and see good days. It's about a change in perspective. Then he says, and don't you don't you give insult for insult. So it's not just only actions, but it's also it's also words, um, and and so it's pretty powerful when you start looking at that. Uh, you refuse payback. Do not pay back. Right now, then he says four. Now, the reason why he's telling you all that, because if you want to love life and see good days, you got to do those things. And then he gives us a few more, and we're going to run through these quickly. Uh, he says, whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. And that's where he says, watch your mouth. I think uh, I think I missed my note. Uh, the, the, what he said in verse 9 is uh, refuse, uh, refuse an attitude of payback, right? Just refuse to, to think you got to pay people back for being mean to you. Then he moves into this, watch your mouth, right? Evil, that is to seek harm. That's to seek sin. That's to uh, to, to try and wound somebody uh, in, in an evil way. He says, you keep your tongue from evil. Don't you do that. Don't you, don't you speak like the world does. And then he says, or deceitful speech. That's the game play, the cover up. The, I'm going to, I'm playing you. I don't really care about you. I care about me and I'm using you to make me feel better and I'm playing you. That's deceitful speech. He says, you keep your lips from that. Don't you do that. Don't you say, don't let your yes be, you know, me, not, not mean yes. And, uh, you know, so it's all about that, you know, it's powerful stuff. Then he comes down, he says, they must turn from evil and do good. So quit chasing the world. That's what, it's the same thing when John says, don't love the world, right? Turn from evil. Listen, the world thinks loving life and seeing good days is all about stuff, right? Stuff, power, uh, leverage, all of that is what they're after. Popularity, how many people can I... You chase that, you'll never get enough likes to love life and see good days. You start chasing stuff, you'll never have enough stuff to love life and see good days. It's, it's the, you start chasing the sin of this world, you will never love life and see good days. I know we all try. God knows we try. 
it won't bring us there. And he's clear on that. They must turn from evil and do good. You can't just say, okay, well, I'm not chasing the world. Yeah, yeah, but you'll never love life and see good days if you do that either. You have to pursue good. You start taking care of others. You start looking out after others. This is the whole blessing thing. You start blessing others uh, and, and you start doing that, you will be blessed. You will love life and see good days. The most contented people on this planet are those that, that, that have a concern and care for others, that live to get up and do things for others. It is the way. He who refreshes others, the whole thing, be refreshed, comes from Proverbs. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Uh, a generous man will prosper. That's what that verse says. It's powerful. And so uh, this is what we try to do. I want to show up filled up. I want to bring refreshment to you because I know when I do that, the result of that, I'll love life and see good days. Uh, then, then he goes on, he says this, um, they must seek peace and pursue it. Listen, uh, this is crucial. This is a crucial piece. I'm a peacemaker. This is who God has called us to be. I'm not out looking for trouble. I'm not, I'm not just running, looking for a fight. Those of you who just think the whole, whole world's a battle and there's this battle and we just got to fight all the time, you miss the whole point. You miss the whole point. We don't war as the world wars. Our warfare isn't, you know, sharper mouth and, and uh, you know, whatever it is that you think you're battling out there. It's about our weapons and our warfare is about holiness and truth and love and goodness. That's how we do it. And so he says, you pursue peace and uh, you just do it at all costs, right? You don't have to have the last word. Just know that. Sometimes that's, that's a sign that you, you aren't pursuing peace. Just, just shh, shh, pursue peace, right? Just because somebody says something stupid, you don't have to point it out. Every time somebody makes a mistake, you don't have to let them know that, right? Just, just pursue peace. Just, man, it's life's, life's so much richer when you quit fighting all this stuff and just see yourself kind of as a spectator to the stupidity without feeling like you've got to jump into it and just be good to people. Then he says this, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Why, why, why am I doing all this stuff? Because God's watching. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ear are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You want to love life and see good days and you think you can get that by not doing what God would 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 want you to do? You think you're, you're going to find blessing somewhere in there? The creator of the universe has set a system up in place for you and me uh, that we should live life in the way that, he's, that he is offering it to us. And we think somehow if we go against him, we're going to end up, the, the ruler who's, who gives us good days, we're going to have that if we don't. Um, you know, I, the, I, I love what Chronicles says, the eyes of the Lord moves to and fro about the earth, that he may strongly support those whose hearts are fully his. Do you hear that? I almost picture God, you know, with his telos his binoculars or whatever, not that he needs them, looking around, just kind of doing that. Uh, oh, hey, look, there's Randy. Really good stuff. He's do he, he is, his heart is fully after mine. I see what he's doing. Yeah, hey, let's 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 bring the full army force of the angels down to, to strengthen him. That's how we should see things. So so God's watching. That's the whole point. Listen, who gives you abundant who gives us abundant life? Who does that, right? Jesus says, I can't even have life and that abundantly. So shouldn't we follow him? Who gives who gives who gives all good gifts? All good gifts come from who? The Father, with whom there's no shifting shadow or varying. Uh, uh, he doesn't just, he, he, he's just constantly doing that. So if we want it, this is the way to do it. The last two days that we've been talking, powerful stuff. Wish I had more time. I've spent longer than I normally do. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. I may not see you Monday because I may be too wasted uh, from traveling uh, and weary to be able to make it happen. But if I do, I'll see you Monday. If not, I'll, Lord willing, I'll see you Tuesday.